Let's open Matthew. Arabu leng Matthew. Twenty-six. Matthew twenty-six. Let's read from verse thirty. Arabu lewo to verse thirty. I want us to read from 30 to 35. Arabu lewo verse thirty-two, fifty-two, thirty-five. And when they had sung a hymn. They went out into the Mount of Olives. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended in me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Amen. But after I am raised up, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter answered and said unto him, If all shall be offended in thee, I will never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. 35. Peter said unto him, Even if I must die with thee, yet will I not deny thee? Likewise also said all the disciples. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, I was uh, trying to meditate about this. I found this message I want to share with you. The test of commitment. I found that in your commitment that commitment will be tested to prove that you mean what you say. I was reading this, I found that this has happened after they worship. Remember the Bible says they ate the Passover and they sing hymns when they were going out. And then that's where Jesus began to say all these things. He said all of you will be offended. And he didn't say tomorrow, he said this night. You know, when I was reading this, I began to say, why these people, when they face this, they could not perceive. Why? Because he said this night. You know, you can fail when we say next week. But if now we say this night, you can be careful of that night. Amen. 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 And the Bible says, Peter, after he heard all of them, would be offended. He said, not me. And Jesus said, you are going to deny me. And he said, no, 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 not me. I'm ready even to die. Peter could not just say that. He was showing his commitment. The way Peter loved Jesus. The relationship of Peter and, and Jesus was so strong. So strong. If you can just remember what happened from the beginning, he knew Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. And one time he got revelation that Jesus is Messiah. So he was in front of others all the time. So even here, he was proving his commitment. But Jesus said, you will deny me three times. And he said, I'm ready to die. And what happened? Hallelujah. Amen. Let me try to tell you that 
the moment you commit yourself, there will be a situation that try your commitment. Tell you the moment you commit yourself, there will be a situation or challenge to challenge your, 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 your heart. Because most of the time we speak things not knowing that it will be challenged. We say, I'm going to be a Christian forever. Temptation will come. So everybody who's committed will also face a test of that commitment. I don't know if you're hearing that. Look here, Jesus said to Peter, I have prayed for you. Listen, whatever that challenges the challenge of commitment. Challenge ngole we challenge ngo i hafaga It needs prayer. O toka tapelo. For you to overcome that. Ore wena uchono tula challenge yo. I will say it in a way you will understand. Keta ibole la kamuholi ta kushisha. When you face a test of commitment. Au kopa na liti ko elle kula ngo i hafa. You pass when you pray. It's only prayer that will make you to overcome that challenge that tests your commitment. If you don't pray, or pray for, it's possible for you to fall down. But Jesus here, he said, I have prayed for you. He said, Satan has desired to sift you. But I have prayed for you. After you are restored, restore others. Jesus knew the commitment of Peter. He said, after you have restored, with the commitment you receive after you are restored, Restore other people. I was reading John 15 from verse 12. Can you read there? You find 12 to 15. John 15. It shows that commitment is created by relationship. Commitment is created by relationship. And that relationship is formed by love. And that love takes us to obedience. For us to obey God is because we love him. And our relationship with him bring forth our own commitment obeying him. The reason why many of you fail in your obedience, your love is challenged. Because love brings relationship. Your love of loving God establishes commitment that is required. If you say, I love God, commitment, the love is questioned. The love of Loving God in you is question. So our relationship with God will be shown by the fruits of commitment. Sometimes you find that when you are committing yourself, there will be things that will affect you. Always there will be things. Ask your neighbor, what are you going through? What are you facing? Those things are trying to drop your commitment. Once your commitment is dropped, your relationship is affected. So Jesus was showing that he lowered his life because he loved us. And this was done by the relationship he had with the family. He said, there is nobody who can show love except except to lower his love to the people he loves. 
There is no better love than that. And that's where Jesus committed himself. Even when it was hard to go to the cross, he went there. We remember the Bible says he despised all the shame. The reason he wanted to establish that commitment because he knew the destiny. The destiny was for our salvation. He saw the joy that was set before him. Listen. Our commitment is there because we can see far. In other words, commitment brings forth visions. When you want to see visions, commit yourself. Because whoever commits himself, he can see far. He can see the destiny. One of our challenges today is that we can see far. One, one of our challenges today is we normally commit ourselves because there are things we have set in front of us. There are some things we are praying to get. Listen, even if you're not getting anything, your commitment can take you far. I don't know if you're hearing me. Even if you're not praying for anything, God will open your eyes and you will go far. I don't know if you're hearing me. Let me prophesy someone. Whatever that is happening to you is not clear now. But I want God to open your eyes to see far. Even if you are challenged here, you won't mind because of the destiny. I want God to show you your destiny. Hey, I've been challenged but I've seen my destiny. I'm facing trouble here but I'm seeing where I'm going. Listen, Christians who can see where they are going, they don't mind about what they are facing here. Sometimes you'll even question, why are they able to comprehend? It's because of where they are going. The revelation of the end determines the actions they take and the step they always take to move forward. If we read Luke 10 from verse 38 to 42 just read you, you will see something there. You will see what Jesus said there. You just read my mouth. Verse 38 to 42. Verse 38 to 42. Yes. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village. Uh -huh. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. Okay, stop but there. Stop there, Mama. I want us to go back to verse 39. Uh, can you read it with Amplified Bible? Because that's where Revelation is. Verse 39, Amplified Bible. Yes. It says, uh -huh. she had a sister named Mary uh -huh. who seated herself at the Lord's feet and was continually listening to his teaching. But Martha was very busy and distracted with all of her serving responsibilities. Stop and there. I want us to look at that verse. Why Jesus say she has chosen the best part? Why Jesus because she was continually sitting listening. 
but this one was busy even be distracted oh ibile nanje ashiretwa nakotsedi nwa disebiwa nje tshala pili accusing the sister Why, why she was failing listen to this we must never do something that we will fail to do you must never do anything that, that you will fail to do can you see this woman was sitting on the feet of Jesus listening continually Because what is needed is how far you go with what you are doing but if you are distracted and you are busy, busy this one was busy oh nadia busy many people are so busy but you are so busy and also distracted but it's better you just sit down no, 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 no Don't, don't say let's go to the mountain to pray. Oscar are you having roar appeal? Because when you reach there I'll but tell I'll you. This one will pray 5 hours. Oh tara pela ora je thana. And you pray 3 hours. When I wara pela je thana. And at this 2 hours you will be just say And at the 2 hours then you will just be saying God. You, you you'll be like try to adjust. O taba o ile ka o ipia kanya o ibia. You'll be having no direction. O taba o sna tsupa tsira lo ngudi ya ya. Don't want people will be distracted. Don't want people to be distracted. He want you to do things because of love. O yakore wena o die di lo ka le bakala pelo. Do small thing because of love. Ya to jeri nyane ka le bakala. Commit yourself on it. Ako felele ke le tsa ga o tsa pelo di dira. And God will say this one I can promote. O ka ga ka mathatusa. Your promotion in the spirit. O tatuswa ga o moyeng. That a man. O bontshwa. But the fruit by being fruitful in the things you are doing. And you must do those things with love. I don't know if you're hearing that. Tell somebody say stop being busy and being focused with what you're doing. Jesus said this one has chosen the right path. Today you must choose the right path. Do what you can do. If you read Luke 9 62 Au kabala Luka 962 You find Jesus say if you put a plow Ere wena o kabaya mo mafase You put a plow Wa be mo mafase on your hand and you look back Au le bela marao You're not fit for the game Au a swanela ke moso Jesus was talking about Commitments need your focus. Jesus na bo lela karo e gafa na o nya ka o o nya kore wena na o be o lebeletse So Therefore you move forward without looking back. Where you put your hand that's where your eyes are. I don't know if you're hearing me. I see your focus. Coming back. And God will take you forward. Someone is being taken forward. I say someone is being taken forward. And the Bible says if that you look back you are not fit for the kingdom in other words. In other words you are double minded. And you cannot receive anything from God. You are not fit for the kingdom. Anything from the kingdom will never come to you. God wants people who are focused in what they are doing. And they carry on with what they are doing. I don't know if you are hearing me. If you want to see when Jerusalem was distracted, The Bible says God was searching for someone who can pray for Saul. So. He went outside of Jerusalem and found a prayerful person. Though there were problems, though Saul was coming, though the challenge was coming, he could not listen to the challenge. He was carrying on with his focus in prayer. When he was busy praying, 
Lord say, hey, there is a challenge that is coming. You are the one who can solve it. I want to tell you something. If you are not focused, when the challenges come to you, they will overpower you. But when you are focused, you will stop them there before they reach you. I see some challenges coming your way. But be focused. You will stop them there. Before they reach you there, you will cancel them. I see you canceling the I see you canceling time. Before it reaches you, check somebody and say, hey, we can cancel the plan of the enemy when it's approaching by becoming committed in our things. In the Lord, we need to be committed in the Lord. Whatever comes our way, our God will tell us that there is something that is coming to stop your commitment and you are the one to stop it. I see God raising you. I see God raising you to solve the problem of you and others. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you shake somebody and say, hey, you are anointed to solve serious issues. So don't be distracted or busy for nothing. Put a plow and don't look back. Put a plow and don't look back. There are many voices behind you. Carry on with what you are doing. Carry on with what you are saying. I know your prayers are being answered when you are here. Carry on. Don't look at the distraction. Don't look at what the devil is doing in your work, in your job, in your business, in your ministry, in your family. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Tell yourself, I've got a vision and I'm here because God has appointed me to be here and I will stay focused in my commitment without looking on what the devil is saying. I will carry on doing what God wanted me to do because I've been assigned and I will never, I will never fail. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. God calling you out for the best things that are coming to you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, hey, stay committed. Stay committed. Stay committed. Stay committed. Because you are close to where you are going. Stay committed. Because you are not far from where you are going. You are far from where you come from. But God brought you close to where you are going. You have been searching for a job. It's a time now to get a job. You have been trying to do business. It's the right time now to get prosperity. You are coming from far. Stay committed. Remain focused. The blessing is around the corner. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Shake somebody and say, hey, Say hey. hey! Stay committed. You are very close to where you are going. You are very close to where you are going. You know, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you this, but most of the time, the devil is like he's winning. Satan o karu nyoko wi no nyoko fe. I'll tell you that. You know when you are busy committed committed. You'll be surprised people who don't fear God. Oto makala baba ngaba chabili mudi. They become better than you. Mano taba baka uno fita we na. Because devil is like his winning. Kwa wani Satan o karu wi a fiti shawa fe. You'll be surprised. I'm so much committed. Oto makala baba wena ki chafile kade sela. But I'm surprised there's nothing that is moving. Because when God prepares you, He prepares you for the best. In the commitment, He's preparing you so that you.
you qualify for what he for where he's taking you. I don't know if you are hearing me. So sometimes you'll be surprised. I was even surprised sometimes that some people serious with God. And I will be praying for them. What is happening? And God say, where they are thinking is not where I'm taking them. That is why I will allow them to go through what they are going through. So that when people write them off, so that people when they reject them, they will never know what I've created in them. Because I I don't know if you are hearing me. Sometimes God, what He normally does, He will take you out and allow people to prosper in front of you. When you are looking around, you have got a question why? But you must carry on committing yourself. When you are busy, committing yourself. God is a jealousy God. He is a jealousy God. He will say, I don't want anybody to know how my child becomes like this. God is a God who wants to shock your spectators. Your God spectators who are looking at you. And God wants to shock them. They are looking. I'll share. I'll share. And they are celebrating. And God is putting something. He's putting something. He's fixing you. He's organizing you. He's lifting you. When you are in the love, where he wants you to be, he says, Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you are in the level of not their expectations, the same God where you commit yourself, you found is lifting you. He has done that to Daniel. He can do that to you. When Daniel lies in Lion's Den, his enemies were celebrating. They were saying it's over. It's over. It's over. In the morning, Dario wake up. He wake up and say, Hey, Daniel. I know you served the living God. I saw your committee. It's God whom you served continually saved you. Daniel say, hey, Hoshi, I'm with the lions. I'm here. I'm with the lions. My commitment in serving the Lord has saved me. And I'm here with the Lions. And Dario say, hey, we are lifting you. When we are lifting you, your enemies are going down. They are going down. I see you being lifted. And your enemies are going down. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Listen, your enemies, they don't have address. Don't worry about them. You have address. address. Because you know where you come from. And where you come from is where your enemies are going. And when they reach there, they won't survive what you have survived. Stay commitment and see. Stay committed and see. I said, stay committed and see. Say, I want to stay committed. Let me show you the last scripture. If we read Luke 18, from verse 1 to 8, oh my God, you will find that commitment is not different with persistent faith. This woman always goes in the night in the widow. She was a widow. She goes, she goes to the judge and say, judge, fight for me. 
And the judge said, I need money. The judge began to talk the natural language. In the natural, you pay the you pay to get something. You pay to get something. The widow, she says, I'm going back again. It's like a person who says, this week, I did four days fasting. Next week, I'm going back again. That other week, I'm going back again. God began to say, eh? we've got someone there. But the judge said, this woman will weary me. The problem of the judge was weariness. The person is persisting. And it's like we can't hear. So it's better we solve this problem. Listen to this. In heaven there are angels who send messages before God. I don't know if you hear what I'm saying. Think about the angels. Coming with your prayers. God say, no, now I'm tired. Give this person what you want. Give this person what you want. I mean, this person what you want. Carry on. This one is different. When I'm looking around, it's him. Remember what happened to Job. It was the same thing. Satan, when he appears, he says, hey, did you see someone who's not different? different? Did you see someone who's different with others? This one, People were just bringing information. Angels are bringing information. Satan say, I know. This man is so much committed because of blessing. That's why we knew that commitment brings blessing. Job was blessed because of the commitment he had. Today, Job is blessed because of the commitment he had. Today, you have not even turned back. You are here. And God wants to answer you. That commitment of last year will bring in answers to it. You go home and read the scripture. And find something about Cyprus. Isaiah 45 verse 13. You find God say, I have stirred up Cyprus. And, and put him in the action of righteousness. To fulfill my purpose. I've stirred him up to be committed in righteousness. And when he's doing that, he'll be fulfilling my plans. Today, I want God to stir you up. I don't know if you're hearing me. You run in a prophetic speed to reach the destiny to reach a place where you are signed. To fulfill the assignment you have been given.